Hey, what's happening, guys? Nick with Classic Nation. This is Evan. You'll recall a couple of weeks ago, we picked up a 1947 Buick Roadmaster convertible. Now, I've been told that this is one of the best Buicks ever produced. Well, we finally got it running, and today, we're gonna go take it on a road test and see if it actually is the best Buick ever made. Give it the juice, Bruce. I'll try. Hmm. You don't have a six volt battery starter, do you? Or charger? Nobody does. That's the point. Ah. Ah. That's what we like. There we go. So what's the history on this car, Nick? You picked it up in yeah. Virginia, right? Yeah, Roanoke. Who, who did you buy it from? So a dude, a private collector who apparently had a ton of cars, had this stored away in a, in a warehouse for years. I picked it up. It was, like I said, a stalled project. Yeah. And Why couldn't he get it running? I don't know. I suspect the wiring was a big thing. There were wires that looked like they had uh, melted completely through. All the shielding was off of them. Um, so somebody had some wiring issues in Gremlins, and they probably just gave up on it. That's how you do it. Three on the tree, baby. So that's a manual shift three on the tree. Yeah. Tell me about that. Yeah, this is a three-speed, but not an automatic. It's a manual. So there's a clutch, and it's an H pattern. Uh, as you would expect with the three on the tree, and you shift it just like a manual if the stick would have been on the floor, but reverse is up close, first is down, second is back and up, and then third is down back. So it's, an, it's a big H pattern with the first arm of the leg of the H being reversed. Why did that fall out of favor? That's a great question. just to be going down the road. Heck yeah. What year was the last time this car was on the road? I mean, it's anyone's guess. This it, this might be this first time on the road in 20 years. Crazy. Yeah. Runs pretty smooth. So far, so good. Nick, my 49 Cadillac. Yeah. yeah. How would you compare the driving experience? Your Cadillac handles very similarly because it's manual steering like this. Is it? power assisted or this is just a manual steering? Yeah, manual. And somebody could quote me on this, but I don't think Buick had power steering until 52. So Somebody could correct you on it, you mean? Somebody will correct me on that, 100%. <laughs> it's this. a real smooth ride. I, again, I don't know if the suspension components are shot or whether they're just big and floaty. I'm but glad you asked. feels it's, comfortable. It's both. Gotcha. They're, yeah. they're probably shot and Buicks were the second to Cadillacs as far as like top of the line goes. Yeah. Buicks prided themselves on having a really comfortable ride and so it's coil springs all the way around which is pretty cool and again that's kind of a, a different thing but they, they set this up for comfort and so really big plush kind of comfortable. I've got no problems with how this feels. This is like feels like we're driving a lazy boy down the down the road right now. Yeah. Look at this. It doesn't get any better than this. Think of in 1947 how long ago that was and how crazy this must have been to be driving this car on this road back then that's yeah. crazy the thing that was completely different about your cadillac is you've got a modern gm v8 engine so your uh your your acceleration and the power to the wheels was totally different makes it feel like a different car mm -hmm. um, this is never going to be that fast and, and as dialed in as that is uh, but again it's a different different car completely um, with the original inline eight engine. So check this out. Yeah. It's an inline eight, uh, 320 cubic inches. It was their biggest engine. And like the way Buick did it is for their different models, they would get different engine sizes. And so since this is the Roadmaster, it got the 320 cubic inch inline eight, which was their biggest one available. The fireball is what they call that. Correct. Yeah. Hitting these curves pretty fast there, Nick. Yeah. Well, I'm getting more comfortable with I it. I see so that. The Speedo is actually working. Go figure. Nice. I've got 
I never have cars where the speedometer works. Are these bias ply tires? They're Uniroyal or, or Uniroyal tires, and I think they are bias ply. Got it. The other big thing on this car, as I decide what I'm going to be doing, is I don't like the single diaphragm brakes. No. Y you only have to be in a couple of scary situations and lose a brake line to know that that's not a good long-term solution. It's one thing if it's just me driving the car, but this is something I want to be able to enjoy with the family and be able to take out and... And take me out in. <laughs> and take you out in, especially you precious cargo. <laughs> That's uh, right. I'd feel a lot better with dual diaphragm, which is to say, if I blew out a wheel cylinder in either the front or either the back, I wouldn't have completely lost brakes. Yeah. Right now, you would just have to rely on my incredible driving skill to be able to save us. Got I it. would be downshifting. I'd probably be trying to slam it into reverse. I'd be looking for a bank if uh, if we did lose brakes and I need to slow the car down. But I would be looking for a soft spot to bail out into. Yeah. The car seems complete except for there's no carpet. Yep. But again, it, there's not really any road noise coming through that makes it annoying to, to ride in or yeah. driving right now. No, not too bad. You know, some rattles and creaks and things that need to be addressed and that probably are common with this old of a car. But for the most part, it, it feels decently solid. I agree. The dash is in crazy good shape. Yeah. I like it. The gauges look so nice and super unique with that really unique styling of the font on the letters. Yep. I especially like the blower switch. Yeah. I'm not exactly sure what that does. What are your guesses? Most of the times you have to pay extra for that type of an option. Yeah. On a car or otherwise, but this one came with its stock, which is nice. Not knowing what the temp in is, temperature is. Keep is it the, moving. Keep it the, moving is forward. It's the only thing that makes me leery. Don't stop. Keep the airflow going in, through. In, The next big thing that I'm going to do to this, I've got some lowering springs. I want to give it just a little bit different stance. Not so crazy that, you know, it throws off the, the handling completely, but just give it a nice little more aggressive mean stance, give it a little custom touch for myself. But the second thing is I'm going to convert the wiring. I'm going to convert it to 12 volts instead of 6 volts. I need to do the wiring anyways. I need to get all new wires in here because there's a lot of wires that are old and frayed. So I've got a new kit that I'm going to put in uh, from American Auto Wire. I'm going to have to get a little bit tricky with that because I don't want to just slap an alternator in the engine compartment up there that's going to look terrible with all the original stuff. So Powermaster actually makes a generator, or I'm sorry, an alternator that looks like a generator and that's what I think I'm going to run with on the front there. American uh, Auto Wire and who else is the Powermaster Power makes, Master. makes the generator. You yeah. know we're looking for sponsors. Yeah. There's a lot of people that say the 47 Buick is the most desirable Buick that's ever been made. Yep. What things make people think that? What is it about this 47 that's so special? The big thing is the styling on, on the car, which they held into 48 also. Um, but the unique thing about 47 was it's the last year of this manual transmission. And from a driver engagement standpoint and to, to not have to have the issues associated with the next year's automatic transmission, this is kind of like the perfect Roadmaster. Uh, you know, road, Roadmasters in the early 50s were fantastic, and I like all of those. Uh, but this one has the panache, if you will, um, that I really like. And again, I love the accentuated fenders on, on this car more than anything. Um, and that's really something that I enjoyed, and I sought out a 47 yeah. specifically for that reason. So it looks identical to a 48, but it's a lot different than a 49. Correct. Wait, yeah, exactly. Man, that was a success. And best of all, we made it back. Quick little peek. I don't even see anything dropping. No drips, no fluid leaks. Is this is this the best shakedown run we've ever had? Well, we you know what? My vote is in. I say, yes, this is the best Buick that's ever been made. And I think you got lucky picking this up. I think you're right. Steal of a deal. This feels a lot like the Cadillac. Mm -hmm. um, it feels pretty classy. This has a crazy presence. There's just something about these 40s cars that has grown on me over the years. Same. Back in the day, I used to be all muscle car. Mm -hmm. Mustangs and Camaros and Chargers and Challengers. But the older I get, the more I start to enjoy the finer things in life. It's these 40s cars that were luxury back in the day. You're growing up, Evan. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> well, we're going to have a ton of update videos coming up next. So stay tuned. 
and we'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Dump it and flip a little Brody right here, dude. Yeah, shall I? Do it for the views. Think I should? Let's just see if we can make it out of here without any uh, traffic incidents. Do it for the views.